Are you bummed about your BMI? Or is BMI a lie? We're going to find out today why other methods are better. I'm Dr. Sean Miles. And I'm Dr. Bill Fricks. And we are two doctors with over 20 years of experience each in family medicine. And we are here to give you some great information today. We're going to talk about something near and dear to a lot of insurance companies and doctors' hearts. And that is... The BMI. The BMI. Body Mass Index. Each week we have a special Fox guest. And this week's guest is... Well, that remains to be seen. Oh. It's a secret. The Fox may not reveal his or herself this episode, so we'll just have to see. Okay, let's start off with the basics. What is BMI? BMI is the body mass index, and that is a measurement that we use that takes the weight in kilograms divided by meters squared at your height, and it gives us a number. And a lot of people decided, based on some statistics and epidemiology, what would be a healthy uh, number to have. So that way we're not overweight or underweight even. Yeah, it's a very rough estimate of somebody's body fat percentage. And like Dr. Miles said, it's strictly based on height and weight. It does not take into account body composition, how much muscle mass you have. If there are so many limitations with BMI, then why have we continued to use it for so long? Well, we have different statistical correlations that show if you're looking at a mass population that it makes sense. The higher the BMI, the more risk people are for certain diseases. Yeah, I think for the general population, it's a pretty close estimate for, for most average size people. It's quick, it's easy, it's cheap, um, but also do um, kind of a visual take. We do a physical exam. We can usually at least ballpark say whether or not they need to lose a little weight or they're fine. Yeah, I don't think that a, an experienced doctor is going to miss someone who's morbidly obese. But this way, insurance companies and people who are from afar might be able to get a good idea. I saw a patient last week mm -hmm. that uh, had a BMI in the morbidly obese range, but he was ripped. Well, besides the BMI, are there any other ways to measure body composition? Now, Dr. Fricks, you told me about one that you did one time. Can you explain the process? I use a bod pod measurement. And what the bod pod is, air displacement plethysmography. Basically what it does is it measures the volume of air around the person sitting in this pod, which looks like a big old egg that you get encapsulated in. And it's a pretty good measurement. Better estimate than just a regular BMI. I remember in college uh, taking a health class and we used calipers that measured your fat or skin thickness at different areas of the body. Men and women had separate areas that they would do. And uh, please don't do that. And uh, use those measurements to be able to calculate a body fat percentage. And I thought that was pretty neat, but uh, there was some variability based on the person too. So it's not completely accurate. It's a pretty cheap way of, of, of measuring body fat. I think that from what I've read, that was a fairly accurate way too. Um, if you know what you're doing. One of the easy things to be able to measure in any office, whether you have calipers or not, is something called the waist to hip ratio. We actually measure the waist and then measure the hips and put those together to get that ratio. And that's been shown to be more accurate as a way of calculating risk because people store their body fat in different ways. And that's what really matters when it comes to, to the risk. We talk about uh, some people perhaps looking like certain fruits, for example. Yeah, the apple and the pear. The apple and the pear. Which would you rather be? I would rather be a pear. Exactly. They because, have thinner waists. Yeah, and there's less visceral fat or fat up around the part that, that can lead to coronary disease and other cardiovascular problems. Where do you measure the waist? I typically will measure it right at the belly button. Where? Can you show us where? <laughs> sure. Stand up and I will show. <laughs> maybe the fox will show us. Right so right, maybe right around the belly button. Right around the belly button. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, uh, the hip, hip measurement at the, the widest part of the widest hips. Widest part of the hips, right where your, your bones are kind of sticking out right there. But yeah, it's easy to do. Anybody can do it. You can do it at home. You can do it in the doctor's office. So there's no real reason why we shouldn't be using that instead of BMI. Less than one is considered pretty good for men. Less than 0.8 of the ratio is for women. So Because women naturally have wider hips.
What do you think about the home scales that can measure your body fat and composition? What do you think? I think it's a good idea. Um, it's got uh, some science behind it, but consumer reports found that there was a lot of variability between the, the, the different scales as much as 30%. I mean, I think it's a good idea, but I don't know if it really plays out. Where I see the, the best use is probably just if you get a baseline and then you just want to monitor your progress. Measure same type of day, yeah. same hydration, yes. same scale. That way you can tell if your workouts are working out for you. You're actually putting on muscle and taking off fat. You mentioned apples and pear body types before. Why are apples less healthy? Basically, the people, the apples, if you will, the ones that are storing their fat in central areas, it gets stored around the organs, and they call that visceral adiposity, or fat tissue around the organs. And that has been linked to a lot of health problems. So the more we can reduce our visceral or in central adiposity, or fat, the healthier we can be. So I think it's important for us to talk about this, too. We are not talking about uh, these terms in regards to how people look. This is all about health. And when we're talking about um, this central fat, we're talking about uh, ways you can stay healthy. Are we looking to have a better appearance? Or are we looking to have better fitness? For appearance, I mean, it's, you can just go look in the mirror. And then fitness, and I really think it should be about fitness. Definitely. And, um, and body weight, even the waist circumference and things, those are just some part of the fitness. The, the things that we're talking about are to improve your overall health. So what can you do to improve your BMI, your waist to hip ratio, mm. your A1C, your cholesterol? All your health metrics. All these health metrics is to stay active. It's good for your physical health and mental health. And then a healthy diet. Do you have a, a diet that you like? I think the, the most important diet that has been studied, at least, that has shown tons of benefits is a simple Mediterranean diet. And it doesn't mean that we're eating pasta and cheese and um, you know, breads and all these things. It's simply very rich in fruits, vegetables, seeds, whole grains, not breads, but whole grains, nuts and other items like that. Most of the protein, uh, at least animal protein, comes from fish and most of the oil comes from some sort of unsaturated fat like olive oil. The Mediterranean diet overall has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease and diabetes and cancers and everything. And there's a lot of people pushing different diets out there, but none of them have the, uh, the data that the Mediterranean diet has. Greek salads. Greek salads. I do like a good Greek salad. What do you think the role of medications can play in all of this? Yeah, I, th I think that as physicians and as consumers that we are bombarded with uh, stories and advertisements and everything else from all these medicines that have uh, been shown to help people lose weight. And they do, a lot of them at least, uh, provide a lot of benefits too and may offer something. But I think that may be a discussion for later on. What do you, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Well, remember that weight loss isn't everything like we talked about, but there are some exciting times coming and we're currently living in where we have a lot of new options. But yeah, I think that is a, another talk. So don't be discouraged about your BMI. Just get out there and get your ex some exercise in, some activity, and eat healthy and uh, stay the course. Lots of plants in your diet. We're not saying that meats are bad, but lots of plants in your diet that can help out a lot. So thanks for joining us today. Be sure to leave your messages. Check that you like our, uh, our little movies that we do. Check the box. Check Give the us box. a like. Give a little signature beside it. I'm getting up in age. I don't know all the terms. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for being with us and look for our next video coming out soon. Make sure to give us a shout out in the comments down below.